Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. More specifically, it's gonna be a What Happened To episode. I really should make this a separate series just to not conflict the two, but they're more or less in the same boat, which is why I'm keeping them together. Moreover, she's also a relatively new champion, having been released in summer of 2020 about a year and a half ago. In a similar fashion to Rel, Lilia was someone whose maiden voyage showed less promise than that of Vex, Yona, and Viego. Coincidentally, they both happened to fit an equestrian theme and appearance. Nowadays, with the overloaded kits and the high carry potential the new champions have, a pick rate hovering around the mid to high 10s is par for the course as you can see on screen. Even while after the hype from their initial launch dies down, they tend to have no problems holding double digit pick rates for at least a year. So though I only designate champions for why no one plays based on if their average is under 4-5% to in recent years, bringing up new champions can help us get a closer look at what separates the popular ones from the not as popular ones. With that said, it's time to dive into what happened to Lilia, the bashful bloom. As the second centaur character to be released in the game, a little over 8 years after Hecarim, it's rather self-explanatory what kind of mechanic Lilia will play around, tempo. It's almost a given at this point, any champion with 4 legs will have naturally high movement speed just like how any really big looking champion will likely have a lot of health. Hecarim is a very confounding champion in his own right, ever since season 5 he's had multiple instances where a few buffs or changes in the meta would skyrocket him from a measly 3-4% pick rate all the way to 15. He basically bulldozes over almost every jungler when he's popular, and it's not hard to see why. One of the most explosive and powerful engages in the game, and his persistent area damage allows him to overwhelm any backline composition. It's safe to say he epitomizes the diver subclass. However, given what we could surmise from Lilia's trailer and her meek personality, she won't have the same aggressive and brutish nature. So, how did that transcribe into her design? Instead of a full frontal assault, she prefers to skirt around a fight, employing a hit-and-run type playstyle by keeping herself as far away from the center of danger as possible, but just close enough to contribute pressure. Believe me, the contrast between her and Hecarim does not detract from her damage output whatsoever. If anything, I would argue Lilia's DPS can easily exceed Hecarim's in the right circumstances. While we're on that, she's got no shortage of it. All five of her abilities inflict damage of some sort. Dreamladen Bao inflicts damage over time whenever damaging her opponents with their basic abilities, and in the late game when combined with other burn items like Leandre's Torment and Demonic Embrace, you can expect to easily lose up to a quarter of your health off the burn alone. Blooming Blows is her main damaging tool, and where the source of her tempo comes from. Damaging an enemy with her abilities not only inflicts her passive burn, but also grants her bonus movement speed stacking up to 4 times. With its high AP scaling, Lilia can very easily reach 5 to 600 movement speed that can last indefinitely. As for the actual attack itself, it's a lot like Darius Q, where she damages the entire area around her. Anyone struck by the sweet spot take bonus true damage. Just by looking at her passive NQ alone, we already can tell she functions best by cutting out her opponents, gradually whittling them down while keeping herself safe. You can see this through the rest of her stuff too. Swirl Seed is a projectile that damages, slows, and reveals enemies hit. It's one of the best scouting and long-range poke tools a jungler can have, attesting to her fear of direct confrontation. Lilting Lullaby is an AoE sleep on anyone she damages, which can be used either offensively to set up for plays or defensively to run away. And she has her W, which I refuse to say the actual name, that allows her to set up an easy lockdown burst combo. As far as her theme and kit are concerned, Lilia is one of the better designed champions of the modern era. Though the way she plays is not the most enjoyable to go up against, it's very cat and mousey, which becomes annoying very quickly. All things considered, her entire identity of being a hit and run attacker was delivered on very well. There's not really anything in her kit that is unnecessary or goes against the notion. Where most of her problems come into play is that her identity just doesn't really belong in League of Legends, at least the current version. She's a skirmisher. By definition, skirmishers don't necessarily have the same front-loaded burst damage as that of their counterpart, the Assassin, nor do they have reliable ways of closing large distances quickly the way divers can. As such, what they lack in engage potential, they make up for with situationally powerful defensive tools to match their endurance with that of other close combatants, along with extreme sustained damage to cut down even the most durable targets. We know full well Lilia has no trouble shredding through her opponents, tanky or squishy, doesn't matter. It's her situational defensive tool that hinders her popularity. What is her situational defensive tool? It's her tempo. She can maintain a movement speed faster than anyone can keep up with, but her short effective range makes it so she has to fight up close and personal in order to deal the bulk of her damage, which ultimately defeats the purpose of her high mobility. Melee champions usually have very large hitboxes or point and click attacks to offset their low range. Lilia has to keep herself dangerously close to enemies who can effortlessly tear her to shreds given her lack of combat defensive tools. Let's quickly see what each skirmisher has to make them survive otherwise fatal damage. Fiora has Repost, Gwen has Hallowed Mist, Jax's Counter-Strike, and Grandmaster's Might, 
Kane has Umbral Trespass, Kled has Burst Immunity because of Skarl, Master Yi has Meditate and Alpha Strike, Riven has Valor, Silas has Kingslayer, Trindamir has Bloodlust and Undying Rage, Viego has Sovereign's Domination, Yasuo has Way of the Wanderer and Windwall, and Yona has Spirit Cleave. Each Skirmisher has something that either mitigates or avoids damage and or hostile effects. Lilia has neither. The only thing she has to her name is the small heal you get from her passive. She has no untarget ability, no shields, no stealth, nothing but movement speed. That would otherwise be a very powerful defensive tool if she didn't have to be so close to her opponents. Blooming Blows has a max cast range of 485. That's close enough for practically any champion, even the slow-ass juggernauts, to hit her. If you want mobility to be a defensive tool, so to speak, it needs to be supplemented by something else. For example, Ash's situational defensive tool is her passive on hit slow. Why is it so effective? Because she's also got an attack range of 600, far enough to keep her away from most melee opponents. Why is Hecarim's tempo so threatening? Because he's got the durability to overpower anything in his way. That and he gets 30% Omnivan from his W, turning him into a veritable drain tanker. If you tried to play Lilia like you would Hecarim, you would get one shot in the blink of an eye. Skirmishers have all those wacky defense options because without them, they would be worthless. Unlike the more stat-checky juggernauts who beat you to death with bulk and damage, their self peel is predicated on timing. Those abilities are what deter enemies from blindly engaging them. If you want to tower dive a Trindomir, you have to hope you can tank tower shots for 5 seconds. If you want to engage a Fiora, you have to account for her W. Lilia is vulnerable 24-7, there's nothing that disincentivizes people from going after her. Her goal is to kite enemies out, but she doesn't have the range to do so. Also, ironically, the best champions that counter skirmishers are other skirmishers. The only one capable of beating a 6-item Jax late game is one of the other skirmishers. However, I can say with utmost certainty that if Lilia were to engage any of her peers, she would die instantly. There might be some of you who say her ultimate is the defensive tool. It isn't, because she has to first damage someone with an attack. Lilting Lullaby then takes a second and a half to activate. It doesn't happen instantly like others, making it much less effective in disadvantage. With that in mind, one might suggest perhaps building tank or bruiser items to make up for her frailty, just like how Hecarim does. That's where the next problem comes into play. Ability power bruiser items have always been few and far between. In Riot's defense, they have been making an honest effort to allow AP choices that can provide some semblance of defense along with it. But the reason it's not as extensive as physical items is due to the power metrics separating attack damage and ability power. As a result, Lilia doesn't have the means to make up for her lack of innate survivability very efficiently. There aren't that many AP melee champions to begin with, but the ones that do exist have a large amount of built-in sustain or protection. We have Echo's Parallel Convergence and Chrono Break. The former is a massive shield, albeit on a long delay, and the latter is famously known for being a get-out-of-jail-free card. Diana has Pale Cascade, which isn't much, but it's a shield that scales off of AP and her bonus health, so it's by no means small. Silas is Kingslayer, very notorious. Mordekaiser is indestructible, a massive shield that can also double as a heal. It's not a coincidence why these champions have such high sustain or shielding. It's a buffer of sorts, to make them durable enough until they pick up a few more items. On the subject of items, AP Bruiser items are much weaker than AD. For example, Steros Gage's damage, health, regeneration, and his shield, the regen and shield both scaling off of health. Demonic Embrace is damage, health, a little bit more damage based on health, and some more damage to the burn. I don't think anyone disagrees with the notion that Steros Gage is a lot better of an AD Bruiser item than Demonic is for AP. Same goes for all the other ones, there's Titanic Hydra, Death's Dance, Black Cleaver, so on and so forth. It also doesn't help that Leandris, the item Lilia generally wanted to build, has changed from an AP and health item to an AP and mana item. Since she has to build that first, she'll remain squishy for much of the early game where the lack of durability matters the most. Lately you may have seen the occasional tank build where she rushes Frozen Heart and some more tanky items, relying on her base damage to do the job. That really only works if she's far ahead though, not so much when she's even or behind, as she doesn't get any benefit from building armor and or magic resist outside of the stats they provide. Mind you, she's reasonably tanky when she gets her hands on Demonic Embrace, Zanya's Hourglass, and Rylice, but you still wouldn't put her in the same league as Hecarim with Sterex, Deadmans, and Muramana. There's also a major issue regarding how she fights. Lilia is a late game scaling champion, she has very good AP ratios, and her different attributes grow stronger as time goes on. Then of course the aforementioned dependence on items to get the ball rolling. League of Legends, especially solo queue, has a course charted for an all burst oriented meta. The most popular and best performing champions are those with high front loaded damage or trade combos, neither of which she has. Lilia is considered a power farming jungler. She takes advantage of her fast clear speed and tempo to go from camp to camp and farm like crazy. However, this means she's an easy target for predator junglers like Kha'Zix, Elise, Rek'Sai, and Nidalee who excel in the early game. 
With no early built-in defense, she's arguably one of the weakest junglers in the early game. You have to spend much of your time avoiding the enemy jungler since there's only a handful of matchups that she actually does well against early on. It does fit her theme because she's shy and averse to confrontation, but in terms of gameplay, it's not the most glamorous thing to do. Even if you do manage to survive early game, you still have to account for problem 1, your squishy tempo-based skirmisher with short range and a weak neutral game. You still likely get destroyed by the majority of popular junglers like Diana, Hecarim, and Kane, Kha'Zix and such because your damage takes a long time to get going. The jungle meta for like the past few years has been whoever strikes first. Then again, she's not without a burst element herself. If you land the sweet spot of her W, you're staring down 450 base damage plus 105% of her ability power in one hit. And you do have an easy setup for that with her ultimate, not just one person either. Lilia is able to get a 5-man sleep if she somehow gets her dream dust on every member of the enemy team. With that much playmaking potential, why don't people play her more? The answer is simple, it's not consistent. Lilting Lullaby's impact in a team fight earns it a spot among the super ultimates next to Fiddlesticks, Cannon, and Bard to name a few. But unlike those ultimates, there's too many factors at play that can swing it from game winning to useless that you have no control over, thus making it not as consistent as the other super ultimates. It's also why she has such a high play rate in pro play, but not so much in solo queue. Just to recap, first her ultimate can only be activated on people affected by Dream Dust, which requires you to hit them with something prior. Second, the sleep occurs after a 1.5 second delay, during which the enemy team can scatter or retreat to a safer location, or they can cleanse it, or they can choose to fight you head on. Third, and this is the most important one, the sleep instantly wears off the moment they take any meaningful source of damage, anything. Ideally, you want the most powerful attack or some kind of hard crowd control like a Morgana Q or Ash Shower to follow up with while they're stuck in place. But in the chaos of a full-blown teamfight, there's no way you and four random players will telepathically agree on what attack should be used to follow up on the sleep, which is another reason why I think voice comms should really be in the game. You might get the most perfect 5-man sleep on the enemy team, but they'll be too spread out for you to set up a wombo combo. Or you can get a perfect 5-man sleep and your dumbass top laner accidentally wastes it by hitting all of them with a regular attack instead of something that can set up your team for a win. Too much can go wrong to make her ultimate a reliable playmaking tool in solo queue. You know, you look at Malphite, he charges into three enemy champions. That's a pretty clear signal to his teammates to follow the damn up on his engage. Bard's Temper Fade puts everyone within the circle on pause for 2.5 seconds, plenty of time for both teams to figure out what's going on and act accordingly, plus they're stationary the entire time. Like I said, 1.5 seconds is enough time for Zeri to dash over a wall or Kindred to cast their ultimate, for Lilia's targets to do something to prepare for the incoming threat. The fact that it's not instant makes it so much less effective than it can be. What's funnier about her whole predicament is that not even a year after she was released, she had a mini rework to make her gameplay less polarizing. So if you remember the two things she struggles with, one, she takes too long to get going, and two, she doesn't have any tangible innate defense. They also want to make her less alt-reliant, which is fine, trying to get her out of pro play and into solo queue. To fix her lack of survivability, they gave her some healing on her passive, making it so she can be a quasi-drain tanker to an extent. But the weird thing is, they made Blooming Blows weaker early on by decreasing the base movement speed and increasing both the cooldown and mana cost, which only exacerbated her weak early game. So she's even more irrelevant in solo queue now than she was before. Like every champion in Why No One Plays, I usually try to find ways to make them more popular, but in all honesty, I'm not sure if I want to for Lilia. She's a gimmicky champion, and admittedly has an annoying playstyle that very few are able to tolerate. Trying to make her more popular is like trying to make Tom Kench or Singed more popular. She's inherently not fun to go up against in light of her playstyle. But casting personal bias aside for a moment, I think the easiest way we can make her feel a lot less vulnerable is to do just that. Make her less vulnerable. The passive regeneration on Dream Laden Bow is nowhere near as helpful as some of the others. She needs some kind of get off me tool like every other skirmisher. Either that or we can give her some kind of hybrid scaling so she doesn't have to choose between full squishy or full tank. Hecarim is able to pull off a tanky bruiser build since anything that increases his movement speed also boosts his damage. Deadman's Plate, Turbo Chem Tank, etc. Not to mention his amazing synergy with Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Ghost. I'm not saying we should give Lilia the same movement speed AP scaling, that would be broken. But something. I don't know, I'm kind of drawing a blank here. I don't want to just give her a shield because there are too many shields in the game. You know what? I'll leave that to you guys. What defensive tool should we give Lilia to make her feel less squishy as a skirmisher? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna end it off here though, so if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why No One Plays episodes after this one. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon for the next one. Take care.